Well, hey guys, if you are new here, I'm a board certified dermatologist. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over the skin signs of low thyroid hormone, otherwise known as hypothyroidism. You guys know I love dermatology so much because the skin, the hair, the nails, they are a window to what is going on internally. And there are many skin manifestations of hypothyroidism. First of all, what the heck is the thyroid anyway? It's a small gland that sits in the front of the neck and it makes hormones that are critical for how your body uses energy. Now, when the thyroid hormone becomes low, then your body kind of slows down in a variety of different ways. Why might someone have low thyroid hormone? The most common cause of hypothyroidism is an autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's thyroiditis, in which you have an autoimmune attack on the body's ability to make thyroid hormone properly. You also can have inflammation in the thyroid that's called thyroiditis. It may happen if you get sick, you have a viral infection. Some people undergo surgery and have some or all of their thyroid removed, and because of that, they have to be on thyroid medication for the rest of their lives. Others may receive radiation therapy to the thyroid that results in hypothyroidism. Certain medications can lead to low thyroid hormone, namely lithium, amiodarone, carbamazepine, and phenytoin. You can even be born with hypothyroidism, although that's rare. It's called congenital hypothyroidism. Now, because iodine plays a pivotal role in synthesis of thyroid hormone, diets that have too much iodine or too little iodine actually can result in hypothyroid. Hypothyroidism is actually really, really common. There is a good chance that you know somebody or even you yourself have dealt with this at some point in your life. It's actually pretty common. The symptoms of low thyroid are insidious, meaning they gradually accumulate over time to be problematic. Initially, they include things like low energy, fatigue. It can impact your mood, cause depression, and other psychiatric symptoms. It certainly can impact your weight and lead to weight gain. Cold intolerance, weakness, an inability to concentrate. Now, as we get older, our risk of low thyroid increases, but unfortunately, these symptoms, sometimes they, they get misdiagnosed as just being related to getting older or you know dealing with adult life issues. Oh, you're stressed out, that's why you're you know, tired all the time. Of course you're tired, you have you know three kids and blah, blah, blah. Low thyroid hormone also can be misdiagnosed as a psychiatric illness, depression, for example. People have been known to be put on antidepressants when in reality they have thyroid disease. So what are the skin clues for low thyroid? The skin becomes cold, pale and dry. When you have low thyroid hormone, your core body temperature lowers. And in an effort to preserve that, the compensatory mechanism is for the blood vessels in your extremities to clamp down, to hold onto heat, to keep the core part of the body warm. And because of that, you have cooling of the extremities, the arms, the legs, you have cold hands and feet. The dry skin with thyroid disease can be pretty intense. Recently, I did a video on extreme dry skin, otherwise known as ichthyosis vulgaris. And in that video, I pointed out that that condition can be acquired secondary to an underlying medical cause. And hypothyroidism is a medical cause of acquired ichthyosis vulgaris. Why? Well, thyroid hormone plays a huge role in the output of sweat, the output of oil, and the synthesis of fats in the top layer of the skin, the epidermis. So thyroid hormone is really important for skin barrier function overall and for lubricating the skin with oils. And that dryness is most profound on the extremities, the legs, the arms. A lot of you guys I know deal with dry, cracked heels. Hypothyroidism can definitely be a cause of that. It's called acquired palmoplantar keratoderma. It can affect the palms and the soles of the feet. It's pretty intense and an underlying thyroid issue may be at play. Recently, I did a video on what diabetes does to the skin, and in that video, I pointed out that it can cause a diffuse yellowing of the skin called keratinemia. That also can happen in hypothyroidism. Why that occurs, we don't really know, but it's most obvious on the palms and soles, especially if you have a deeper skin tone. It's not gonna be obvious on the rest of your skin, but if you look very carefully at the palms and soles, they have yellowing, and that is thought to be due to abnormalities in the metabolism of keratin from the diet. 
One thing people don't realize often is that dermatologists, not only are we specialists when it comes to diagnosing issues of the skin, but also issues of the nails and the hair. Hypothyroidism definitely can impact your hair because thyroid hormone plays a key role in the hair cycle. And people who have hypothyroidism, they develop diffuse thinning of the hair because their hair cycle is kind of all screwed up as a result of low thyroid hormone. They also can develop what's called a telogen effluvium, a lot of hair shedding, and the hair itself becomes very coarse and brittle and prone to breakage. And this can affect not only the hair on your scalp, but the rest of your body. One key finding that you can often pick up on in people who have hypothyroidism is that the lateral third, the outer third of their eyebrow becomes thin. Now there are other conditions that can cause thinning of the eyebrows. I have a video, by the way, on thinning eyebrows, so check that out if it's something you're dealing with. It's not always hypothyroidism, but that is another clue, and it's related to the hair cycle being shifted around and affected from lack of thyroid hormone. With hypothyroidism, the nails also grow really, really slowly. They're quite brittle. If the hypothyroidism continues untreated, you can get an increase in something called mucopolysaccharides, things like hyaluronic acid, the ground substance, in the deeper layers of our skin. You know, we're all, a lot of people pay to have hyaluronic acid injected into their lips to look fuller, but with hypothyroidism, you can get an accumulation of that type of substance, and it has a profound water binding ability. And as a result, people with hypothyroidism, they develop a condition called myxedema due to accumulation of that ground substance. The skin becomes swollen and almost has a waxy appearance as a result of accumulation of this mucopolysaccharides and increased water binding capacity in the deeper layers of the skin. And it can actually change your face. It can cause broadening of the nose, the lips become very swollen, you get puffy eyelids, and the tongue becomes noticeably enlarged mucopolysaccharide accumulation. It doesn't just occur in the skin though, it can occur throughout the body, including around the heart, around the vocal cords, and a presenting symptom is deepening of your voice as a result of the accumulation of that mucopolysaccharide. The skin looks very pale in hypothyroidism because basically the accumulation of uh, ground substance mucopolysaccharides in the deeper layers of the skin with all that water binding ability down there and all that increased water content, it, it changes how light is reflected off the skin and it looks a lot paler. You also can get entrapment of the nerves in the wrist and you can get what's called carpal tunnel syndrome. Numbness and tingling of the fingers and poor grip strength in the hands. And that entrapment can also occur uh, in the face, you get facial droop, referred to as a facial palsy. You can also have abnormalities in the function of the muscles around the eyes, and you get a droopy eyelid. In many cases, people with hypothyroidism, they're prone to bruising, probably related to uh, a decrease in production of clotting factors, and the blood vessels, the capillaries, are much weaker. Those are the skin signs of hypothyroidism. Now, they don't all come out at once. We're talking about accumulation over time when untreated, and these things will resolve when the thyroid hormone is replaced with a the medication. There also are some other skin diseases that are associated with hypothyroidism, meaning if you have hypothyroidism, especially autoimmune hypothyroidism, you're more likely to have some of these other conditions. The first one is alopecia areata. That is an, another autoimmune disease that attacks your hair, and it presents with a sudden loss of hair, maybe in a, just a few patches, or you get all of a sudden a complete bald patch. It can affect your eyebrows, and it can affect your eyelashes. It can affect hair on anywhere on your body. So if you have hypothyroid, you are at increased risk for having alopecia areata. Vice versa, if you have alopecia areata, you are at increased risk for having autoimmune thyroid disease. Vitiligo, another autoimmune condition, this time it attacks the pigment producing cells in your skin, leads to white patches with no pigment. Uh, it can affect the skin and the hair as well. And chronic hives, chronic urticaria. Uh, is also associated with the presence of antithyroid antibodies. And in some cases, treating the thyroid disease will result in resolution of those hives. People with hypothyroidism also can develop a variety of different anemias. Anemia is basically when your uh, blood is not optimally carrying oxygen around, we'll say. 
And one reason for that with hypothyroidism is that you can develop an autoimmune uh, attack on part of the uh, stomach that makes something called intrinsic factor, which is necessary for the binding of B12. So you don't take B12 up well. I have a video that I did fairly recently on the skin signs of B12 deficiency. Remember autoimmune disease was one reason to be B12 deficient. And for folks who have hypothyroidism, they are at increased risk for what's called pernicious anemia, basically autoimmune anemia related to uh, you know, an inability to take up B12 properly. So those are the skin, hair, and nail manifestations of hypothyroidism. It is a really common disease. A lot of people deal with it, and it can make life very difficult for people who are going through this. As you can imagine, poor energy, weakness, fatigue, mood changes, increased weight, um, poor exercise tolerance, constipation people deal with as a result of hypothyroidism. I mean, a lot of symptoms it, and it, it really can be, be quite devastating to cope with. Fortunately, you know, these, these things I've outlined here that occur with hypothyroidism, they do resolve when the hypothyroidism is treated, but that can take some time. So it is really, you know, not a pleasant thing to have to deal with. I think that, you know, people who deal with hypothyroidism, oftentimes they struggle to maintain their weight. As you can imagine, when your thyroid is low, your metabolism slows down, so you put on weight, you don't have good energy, so you're not able to exercise. You can have really poor exercise tolerance as a result of the hypothyroidism. And because of the increase in those mucopolysaccharides, you actually have accumulation of water weight. Now, when the thyroid disease is treated, that can go away, but it can take some time. So I think this group of people is a vulnerable target for the diet and wellness marketing of all sorts of gimmicky products, you know, to balance your hormones and for thyroid health and all of these things. So you really have to be careful. Having hypothyroidism, it can be very emotionally taxing, just kind of feeling like your body, you have no control over anything. So hopefully this video outlined to you, you know, the skin findings of hypothyroidism, but also, you know, some of the other symptoms that can easily be dismissed uh, as you know, just stress related to day-to-day -day adult life, or you know, just old age. But in reality, you know, that is a very, very treatable condition. That if left untreated, it can be deadly. It can be quite deadly and take a tremendous toll on your health and your emotional health. All right, you guys. So those are the skin signs of hypothyroidism. I hope this was informative. On the end slate, I'm going to put my most recent video on what diabetes does to your skin and you know the skin signs of diabetes if you want to check that out. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye!